Hello and welcome to the hard sell where the stick in the swill bucket rattles back. Time for another have a break. Have a break. Let's go back nearly 30 years. Ow. That actually physically hurt to admit, but it's true. To 1993. And the first few months of the new, worse ITV. Specifically, a transition between two new franchisees on a sultry Sunday in mid July. Good morning, TV! Three and a half hours of the brightest breakfast TV you've ever seen. Good morning, TV! Summer holidays just got started on television, if not necessarily at every school in the country. So it's kiddie fun all the way, or has been, with the Disney Club. Classic Sunday morning material throughout the 90s. Initially created as a way to fold the Disney afternoon into British schedules. Starting out as a mere hour after TV AM. After GMTV, of which Disney owned a quarter, took over, it started to bloat over the traditional borderline. Hasn't happened yet, though. Besides, this is just the summer holiday variation, consisting of episodes of Gummy Bears, linked by Paul Hendy and Richard Orford, flailing about on an oversized sofa. The show ends with the obligatory Sparkling Castle closing logo, albeit with relatively sober Buena Vista credit. And this also brings the day's GMTV to an end, but not before adverts. Starting with... Ah, Mr. McDonald, you have a nasty habit of surviving. Now, with every McDonald's Happy Meal, you choose. Each week, there's a different one of four mini attack packs or four mini Barbies to collect. Happy Meals, with what in 1993 was becoming the increasingly ubiquitous voice of Chris Evans. That's the tosser, not the superhero. As everyone knows, Happy Meals are usually themed for a limited derpity after whatever the big film or event is at that moment. Well, at the time of this break, Jurassic Park's not out for a week yet, at least in the UK. So for now, they've gone with some relatively generic but rigidly enforced gender-specific toys. Either Cool Trucks or Barbie. Yeah, that's right, kid, defy the patriarchy. Challenge traditional gender roles. It's a social construct. No, you bastard. How literal a patriarchy can he get? McDonald's Happy Meal. Barbie or Attack Pack. Guess we're not ready for the gender spectrum in 1993. So the correct toys go to the correct child based upon society's expectations as correlated with their genitals with a bit of help from the magic of white male reality. It's actually a little encouraging to realise how shocking it all seems in this day and age. We really have made an advance. Slightly. You choose. I couldn't believe that Pampers could be beaten for skin dryness. Well, you were right, Alexandra Dugood. How is that not a made-up name? Anyway, she didn't believe Pampers could be beaten for skin dryness, and indeed, it technically wasn't. Until I found a new nappy, and then I found that these Pampers baby dry were brilliant, unbelievable. Because Pampers' even better, more expensive version is, in fact, still Pampers. I'm really not sure what they were trying to prove there. Introducing new Pampers Baby Dry. Only Pampers Baby Dry has this unique baby dry layer that lets wetness right through and then turns white again, helping to keep baby dry. Apart from that, we've got a Route 1 nappy advert here, complete with adorable Babby. All Babbies are adorable. Stilted Vox Pop, soothing pans across logos, and the obligatory mysterious blue fluid, which I'm pretty sure is the same stuff they use for panty liner and tampon adverts. It's so unbelievable, it really is. I think it's, a, it's the children in, in my nursery wearing Pampers baby dry nappies. We are, we're talking about dry bottoms all over the place, all day. It'd be wonderful. Obviously, with something like the Disney Club, there's a decent chance parents are watching with their offspring. Or at the very least, that they happen to be in the same room. So there's always been babby products all over those programmes. To be honest, I don't know how competitive the nappy market actually is. And unless you're one of those evangelical families that pumps a new baby out every nine months like Queen Blowflies, 
a relatively short-term necessity anyway. New Pampers Baby Dry for the driest, happiest babies. Just to prove I'm not a damned liar, there's more baby action after that, along with a potentially fatal dose of saccharin. My greatest wish for Emma is that she grows to be strong and healthy. For Emma's sake, pure and wholesome ingredients go into Boots' first harvest baby food. Serious backlighting and Vaseline lens, the most simpering voiceover they could find to recite the soggiest script about wanting the Bablet to grow up big and strong, or while a piano punches you in the face with wistfulness. The effect is thankfully being undermined by the baby itself, who, being a baby, has no idea what's going on, no interest in the artistic direction of the advert, and really only wants the spoon to keep coming, please, thank you. Who cares that your baby gets the right start? We care, because you do. Mr Kipling's contribution to our picnic proved uncannily suited to the occasion. Ah, Mr Kipling. This is one of the few where you actually get to see him, and his Silk Shaps voice friend, if only from the back, as they uh, go on a picnic with several small children. Very wholesome, I'm sure. Don't worry, their parents are also present. His lemon slices, bright and sunny in aspect and zesty by nature, vanished like the sunshine. Don't laugh at the children's disappointment, Cyril. His country slices, on the other hand, with their sultanas and spices, were notable for a quality much admired. In cake, as Mr Kipling said, they are, you see, so exceedingly moist. Yeah, I'm going to need you never to say the word moist again, either. There's no stopping Tom and Jerry when they get a taste for new multi-cheerio. Multi-cheerios, you'll notice. So-called because they actually launched Honey Nut Cheerios over here first. Sans qualifier. Since then, it's been swapped around to international standards, so we don't get confused. Anyway, Tom and Jerry. The movie's out soon. The first movie, of course, one which was just shit and awful, as opposed to that already forgotten one from a year or two ago, which was just kind of sad and painful. But at least they couldn't talk in that one. Especially now there are free Tom and Jerry the movie stickers to collect. Anyway, the even worse one will soon hit cinemas, as far as this advert is concerned, and then almost immediately bounce off them again, because no one wants to see that shit. It's actually been ready and waiting on the shelf for almost a year, which is something of a clue. But, as the man says, We've got to have money. And so, here's some stickers, by way of a tie-in. They'll do anything for those crisp, toasted, whole-grain O's of rice, wheat, corn and oats. Was I the only kid who always thought it looked wrong and awkward when... Classic cartoon characters appeared with carefully detailed photo-animated versions of real-life products in their real-life packaging. Oh well. At least Tom gets to win for once. They're so delicious they can't wait to get stuck in. What's happened to the orange Smarties? Smarties! From the late 80s to the mid 90s, it felt like Smarties had a new colour or flavour or both, and usually an assorted giveaway, every five minutes. Blue ones, green ones, whistles, pouch bags. This one's all about orange. What tricks are they triggering <laughs> with their extra orangey power? There were orange Smarties with a hint of orange flavour. By which I mean that slightly tangy sweetness that doesn't taste anything like oranges that you get in chocolate bars and the like. What can zap a tangy Terminator with eight sonic orange sounds? And a free Smarty Zapper if you sent away the tokens, which I actually did. It turned out to be a small orange disc with buttons that you pressed to make various sound effects. It was quite neat, but it didn't slay my enemies, or even just turn them orange, as the advert implies. Only Smarties have the answer. Orange Avengers should arm themselves with a Smarties Zapper. Before it's too late. 
Can you make regular savings on your washing powder? No! Thanks for listening. Next. Now I can, with the new refill tin from Ariel. They don't get much more grimly root one than this. A smiley housewife explaining a product straight down the lens. So yes, Ariel have started putting their powders in metal tins and plastic refill packs. This is one of approximately 8 billion trends that the laundry detergent industry went through in the course of the 90s. Like many, this one started out on some sort of ecological basis. Because there's less packaging, there's less waste. And I feel I'm doing a little bit to help the environment. Because it's a refill, it costs a little less too. Aerial liquid refill pouch. Put a little less waste in the environment, a little more money in your pocket. But presumably by 1993, P&G at least, have realised that the refill packs are still plastic and therefore non-biodegradable. So at best, it cancels itself out, ecologically speaking. So here, they're selling it purely as a money saver instead. What was the recession on? It keeps the powder dry and lasts ages, so you can keep on using refills. Notice this edit. Which will save you money. Doesn't it look like she's been cut off in mid-sentence? Which will save you money. Time and time again. The new aerial refill tins, think of them as money boxes for your powder. Because you might as bloody well. Think of them as money boxes for your powder. We're still not done. GMTV had to sell it as many adverts as possible in order to get over the line and out on time. Not to mention to make money out of only three and a half hours broadcasting a day. Nerf. The traditional sponge throwing kind was never as popular down our way as the traditional, if terrifyingly hardcore, water pistol. It's just more practical, I suppose. You didn't have to keep crossing through no man's land to pick the ammunition back up. It's easy and tempting to look at this sort of thing as a horrific indictment of a war-obsessed society, training its people up from infancy to delight in carnage and ordnance and combat. But the truth is that kids have played with weapons as toys since the invention of the stick. It's the species that's obsessed with conflict, not merely modern society. Which, on the one hand, is arguably even more depressing a thought. But then, on the other hand, it means there's sod all you or anyone else can do about it, so never mind. Let's just enjoy this tense action scene in which two boys track each other through what looks like Brian Kant's shop from Bric-a-Brac. The hour is upon you. It's time for earrings that dance, for Hollywood hair that turns pink at a glance. It's mad. The usual thing, really. Barbie adverts barely changed from the 60s to the turn of the century, when Bratz came along to shift the paradigm and shatter the zeitgeist. Epochally. It's time for Barbie, for magic to share, for secret hearts that appear from Watch free with any two Barbie or Barbie friend doll. Here we've got nods to many early 90s obsessions. Hair that changes colour, a la global hypercolour. Giant earrings, a la Wendy James. Transmigration of object. And now, free watches if you buy two of the damn things. 1993 seemed to be the year for children's wrist watches. They were momentarily everywhere. Had it just become legal or something? It's time for Barbie! A free watch while stocks last! Leaflets are in store now! Soda streams will get busy with the fizzy! Ah, soda stream. A magical device that allows you to make your own Coca Cola at home. Almost Roman Emperor like decadence. It certainly seemed like unimaginable luxury to me and my sister when we were growing up. Probably because our parents never let us have one. Not that we're bitter. No, really. The following year we visited relatives who did have one. And after a summer of drinking almost nothing else, the novelty was run and truly dead, and our urine was green and smelling of aspic 
and ultimately requiring a certain amount of hospital time. Unsurprisingly, there's no hint of that in this dime store wrap, co-starring several supermarket logos. Cola, lemonade, cherry and orange, soda stream. And one for mail order catalogues as well, which isn't really a logo because it's not a company, it's an abstract concept. And this is the best way they could think of to include it. At these and other stores, get busy with the fizzy. Get busy with the urinary infection, more like. Get busy with the fizzy. Finally, in this long-winded bitch of a break, have a movie trailer for a shit film. We're not in Brooklyn no more. They must rescue the princess and make it safely back. Our world before time runs out. Come and get it, lizard breath! Plumbers! Super Mario Brothers. Oh dear. I was a ten-year-old child and one who had a Mega Drive rather than a SNES, and therefore hadn't even played Super Mario Brothers. Sad but true. But even I remember thinking at the time, well, that doesn't look right at all. And indeed, it wasn't. Having said that, Shigeru Miyamoto thought it was trying too hard to be faithful to the game, so make of that what you will. It's a particular shame because there will probably never be an actor more physically appropriate for Mario than Bob Hoskins. Not even Patton Oswalt. And he would have done a great job in a movie that had any idea what it was trying to do. Unfortunately, this wasn't that movie. With the studio nervously commissioning a new screenplay under the director's noses, and said directors managing to alienate half the cast because they'd never done anything on this scale before and didn't really know what they were doing. They were the Max Headroom guys. And it's a shame this destroyed their career, but it is at least partly their own dumb fault. Oh, Dennis Hopper didn't help, hires a kite with no idea what was going on. Mind you, no one else has any idea what's going on either. Come and get it, lizard breath! Plumbers! Super Mario Brothers. Anyway, that really is it and GMTV finally collapses exhausted on the dot of 925 with this little faux handwriting gambit and a flourish of its sax-heavy theme. This greetings card mess is what replaced the iconic TVAM copyright egg cups, which I had loved seeing every day. I could have cried, I really could. With a nice smooth transition, it's on to the equally near fight West Country. Hello and welcome to Sunday here on West Country. I miss their stately classiness now, but at the time, not knowing what the future held, I hated them even more than GMTV. I mean, it would have killed them to keep Gus Honeybun? It's not like they didn't even have their own birthday stock. Okay, okay, 30 years, let it go. So that was the middle of the long hot summer of 1993. If I had to pick an overarching theme, and make no mistake, I absolutely do not need to do any such thing. But if I did, I'd probably go with desperation to make it to 925 on the dot and switch over to the national franchises on time. We ran the full spectrum of potential summer holiday GMTV viewers there which is to say small children and their mum. Sweets, toys and Happy Meals. But also, laundry detergent and babby stuffs. And I'm not really sure who Mr Kipling was pitched at by then. I certainly don't think children found slow-paced close-ups of cakes with an old man talking to them on the soundtrack very exciting. It wasn't a great year for films either, at least not yet. The Tom and Jerry movie on one hand, Super Mario Brothers on the other, the likes of John Hughes's Dennis and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 in between. Thank God for Jurassic Park, that's all I can say.
you just sat through a Bob the Fish production. Nice! If you haven't already, you absolutely must check out bobthefish.org.uk. Literally hundreds more videos, not unlike that one, adding up to days worth of entertainment and all absolutely free. But if you're not a cold-hearted skinflint, you can always support us on Patreon. For as little as anything at all, you can make programs like the one you just watched possible in the first place, and become eligible for bonus material such as glimpses of the book I'm writing about the BBC, monthly riffings on random commercial breaks, the complete archives of the angry political satire magazine Two Sons, and even the odd very occasional bonus video essay unavailable anywhere else. If nothing else, you should prevent me from starving and or freezing to death in the foreseeable future, so that'll be nice. No pressure or anything. BobTheFish.org.uk You make it what it is. Mm -hmm.